Hello everybody, what you're about to see is our story sailing from Nova Scotia offshore in one go to Bermuda um, in October 2022 on our sailing vessel. We did this on our board, our Rival 34, built in 1979 in Southampton, England, and this is our story. Tomorrow is the big day. We're going, aren't we? Yeah. We're we moving. Are. Yeah, we're currently in um, Bridgewater. Bridgewater Marina, where the guy who owns this marina, Captain Dave, in Bridgewater Marina, has given us a free berth. And we've been here for about three days. We come up the river from La Have River Yacht Club because they were getting all their pontoons out. Uh, what they call floats here, they call pontoons floats. Because of the winter. Because of the winter, yeah. Uh, so we invited up here to stay as long as we like until these boats get lifted and these pontoons get lifted. But we have a possible weather window and if it's all good, it looks all good at the minute, we're going to be leaving here tomorrow, motoring down to the river mouth and on early Thursday morning we're setting off for Bermuda. <laughs> Go for the weather, innit? Or the Bahamas. Or Bahamas, yeah. How are you feeling about that? Nervous. Nervous, Nervous about it, yeah. And me. Because it's the North Atlantic, it's it's autumn. Yeah. It can be really dangerous, can't it? Yeah. And uh, we haven't been out there for a long time. We've got a new rig kind of thing as well. Yeah. Yeah, new standing. Uh, yeah, I'm scared. I'm, I'm a little bit scared. Yeah, new standing, stainless steel standing rigging. Uh, we haven't sailed for about a month, believe it or not. We've been working on the boat. And um, it is scary. It is scary. Some people are saying, mm. oh, bide your time, wait for a better, better weather window. Other people are saying, oh, you want to get out of here now. Get out before it's too late. Mm. Get stuck in Nova Scotia for winter. This is where we are, West La Hague, just at the end of this river. We are actually anchored. I know we're on a mooring ball just by here, next to the bakery. So it's a free sail run out. Um, we are in Nova Scotia, Canada. There's Hamilton, Bermuda. <laughs> Here's the Bahamas. Yep. Um, we're either going to go here or we're going to go here. Depends on the weather. So this is day one. Leaving here. Let's go a couple of hours forward. This wind does southwest at least. Yeah. Not great. So we're going to be ended up probably going out here to about here. Um, let's go on. I'll just go on every 24 hours I think. 24 hours. Yeah. Bit of low. We might have to motor. Our, our aim is to sail from here and then motor and try and get into this airflow here which is going down. Oh, it's not too much. That's our aim anyway. We get into this airflow. Let's go on another 24 hours. And we'll still be in this airflow, hopefully, going down here. Fast. Well, be joining here and then go yeah. down here. So we'll be down by here. Go on another 24 hours. Whoops. Hopefully, we'll be going down by here. I don't know. It's all guessing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Another 24 hours. Go again, going down here. Getting yeah. pretty much blown off course, isn't it? Yeah, a bit of blown off course. Got southeasterlies there, and it's hard to go straight down south in that. And, and that's that quite gonna, windy. That 25, be, yeah, 26, 26 knots. Gusts. Gusts. But yeah, we are going to be slowly be pushing off course yeah. towards the west. Um, another 24 hours. Then, yeah, we've got wind on the nose, so we'd be really just well. If we're down by here, uh, I don't know what we're going to do. Go backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Down. Let's go on another 24 hours, ignore that. Yeah. Oh, and then the wind changes. So, if we're over by here, say, we're going to start going back on course. Yeah. So, it's not going to be a straight run by any means. And no. this is several days in the future, so it possibly could change, to yeah. be honest. And we're so going to carry on down here. Airflow running down yeah. then as well. And that will help us out. And get back Good on airflow course. then. And then there's Bermuda there, which is 670 nautical miles. Um, if we don't make Bermuda and we're like way off course out here, then obviously we're just going to carry on 
and just try and make it down to the Bahamas. Yeah, this is our other big, massive, massive problem. And um, we're starting off here. We'll be going out to here and then probably going down with the wind. At some point, we're gonna have to go across this. Yeah, it's changed again, that Gulf Stream, isn't it? Yeah, this is the Gulf Stream. They advise to go across the Gulf Stream in as little wind as possible because it is extremely rough. It can get extremely rough. This runs up to 3.4 knots. Yeah, of current. It's yeah. Very warm water yeah. going all the way from the Gulf of Mexico. It runs all the way up. Yeah. Um, if you get wind over current, they say, in there, it can be extremely dangerous with high overturning waves. Look at the sea temperature difference. I found this remarkable. So up here, the sea temperature is 15 degrees. And you can actually see, I haven't got the currents on at the moment, but you can actually see the Gulf Stream in the hot water. And wherever the Gulf Stream is, it's hot. So you got 18 degrees there, 25 degrees there. Yeah. So look at the difference. And that is why the Gulf Stream is known to produce thunderstorms and heavy winds along the difference of temperatures. Like here is 22, 25 there, 25 there. Yeah. 20 there. Yeah, a lot of uh, activity. Yeah. Engine's on. First challenge is to motor out. I'm on a mooring ball today and it's cold. <laughs> Are you ready? Goodbye, Nova Scotia. Hello, warm and pleasant lands. Then it remind you of to sail when we do left the UK down yes. to Bay Biscay. We left drop the mooring. Yeah. Same sort of thing. There over there. Yay! It's warm. <laughs> <laughs> We're off. I can't believe it. <laughs> We're leaving. Got the weather window. We're going. Wow. Look at the day we got. Beautiful. Oh, please, please have a beautiful sail down. Please. Next seven days. How you feeling? Okay. A bit nervous. Nervous, apprehensive. Uh, if the weather stays like it is, we should be okay. Fine. Is that a good sign? A bald eagle. One head bald eagle. Just flying by. Massive, isn't it? Heading into the sun. Massive, yes. Goodbye, Nova Scotia. We are going to miss you. Been here a long time. Made some really good friends, amazing people, amazing place. We'll miss you terribly from the bottom of our hearts. Oh, she's healing! <laughs> so excited. Ah, oh, wind's cold though, isn't it? It's cold. The engine's just gone off. What are conditions like up there, lads? Cold? Yeah, the wind is cold, coming off the cold ocean. Uh, we're doing five knots. We've got nine knots, just slightly forward of the beam. Uh, just got to pass these islands now. and looking choppy out there, so we're probably going to put one reef in the main and uh, put some furls on the Genoa. If it gets to about 25 knots to 30 knots, we're cutting into it a bit. I'm going to furl the Gen Jenny and put our storm stay sail up with two reefs in the main. I think that'd be a nice balance. In my head, it works. Athens can't wait to just yeah. use it in a fourth day, basically. No, can't wait. <laughs> it's excited to use it. Okay, things are picking up nicely now. I didn't expect it. Getting quite windy and wavy. We've got about 18, 19 knots. We have to ease off to, to port in a bit. We put a reef in the main. You know. Yeah. We are pushing the boat over a little bit at the moment, so we're just testing the rigging. Yeah, just get no problem. Make sure everything's okay. We're certainly not going to sail like this for 24 hours. Not as much. We've got to have some comforts on board. Here we go. While we were in Nova Scotia, we um, took the opportunity because we knew we were going to be doing this massive offshore passage. It's not that massive, it's about six, seven, eight hundred miles, but because of the weather, it is it was massive to us and it's something we were thinking about for about a year before we knew we were going to go up to Nova Scotia and we knew how to get back down. 
Um, so we took the uh, basically we took the opportunity. Our standing rigging was about 15 years old. Uh, we took that down. We inspect took the mast down, inspected the mast, put new brand new standing rigging up, and we put um, an inner forestay up with a hank on. Uh, storm sail to use if we needed it. We also done other upgrades. We changed the lights on the mast, and we bought ourselves not related to sailing, but we bought ourselves a new cooker because the other one was rusting to pieces. Bitterly cold up there. I'm gonna get my uh, suit on. Watch out. Stand up. Right next to this one. Like you'd be even colder though, wouldn't it? Sea is going a bit more greeny blue already, which is nice. We just got a little bit of a lull at the moment. 15 knots, 15, 21 knots. Uh, later on this afternoon, we're going to get 30 knots. So, we'll, when and if we get 30 knots, 6 o'clock this afternoon, 6 pm, we're going to have to uh, bear it off quite a bit. The things are going really well at the moment. The only negative thing, it is so cold. It's really cold. So you can see our degrees. We're nearly heading directly south. Oh, so doing well. Really well. So they put up our storm staysail. It's very small. Uh, really, it's not enough wind. When it blows 25 knots, oh my God, it's small, isn't it? we're doing five knots. It's perfect, isn't it? 25 knots, but yeah, it's too, it's too so hey, small. Anything less than 20 knots, we tend to go about three knots. Uh, we don't know how high to have the tack off the deck either. The windier it gets, you want to bring the centre of the gravity down to the bottom of the boat. Yeah. So if it gets 25, it should be on the deck, really. Hey, it's teeny. <laughs> it's working though. It's working nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's gonna get windy later. Really windy. Yeah, 30 knots. So we're down to Trevor Reef Main and that's going to more than likely. More than likely, yeah. Just realised I can no longer see Canada. Nova Scotia. Ah, I feel really sad to be leaving. <laughs> it's been such a lovely place. I've really loved Canada to bits, to be honest. Still blowing a hoolie. Um, 18 to 20 knots. It's quite uncomfortable because we're so close hold at the moment, but that's just the way it is. Cooking tea time, isn't it, Ed? Yeah. First time we've used our oven out to sea. Uh, when it's dry tomorrow, we're going to make a thing to go on here, aren't we? Because the oven has already gone back and banged the outside of the hole. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make a thing because we've got this here. This here. We've got this thing here. I'll lock it in place on there somewhere. Yep. We just tie it to the leg or something. Something you need there. Yeah, because it's gonna bang. It's gonna bang against the yes. hole. So to the, today's menu, we got a brown bag. A brown bag with curry in it. From Jeff. Can you give us. Some Jeff's nice wife thing. Sarah made it for yeah, us. Yeah. Oh nice. Oh, please don't throw it everywhere. Yeah. Oh, it smells gorgeous. Beef curry. Yeah. Bang it and rice. Tea's going well. The rice is going to be done in about five minutes, warm the curry up and we're going to have some bread and butter with it. We're going to eat out of pans because anyone would have a, eat out of a plate to be a fool to end up on the floor. We put these on, didn't we? Just to hold the pans in place. Much needed. We just had a rogue wave, didn't we? Yeah, a big wave. Another one there. Another one there. Just joining together some of the waves and come up and way, way, everything was flying. So I'm getting used to this, I've been sat in a marina or on a mooring or on a pontoon for the last month and then you go out in this and you're trying to live your life and cook and just exist. 
and uh, just being thrown around everywhere. It's, uh, it's quite a, quite a shock to the system. It's leveling. How do you feel about this evening, Liv? Okay, yeah. The wind's eased off, so it's a bit better. Yeah, more comfortable on board, isn't it? Yeah, well, it was. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be very cold tonight. Yeah, I'm hoping that by the end of tomorrow, we'll be south quite a bit, so it won't be as cold. Then, right? Yeah, I think it's so. Oh, bitterly wind. Ten to nine in the evening. Uh, winds picked up to about twenty knots, and we were super, super close hold. We've had to ease off a little bit, six degrees to port, and get a little bit of Jenny in. We were healing over too much. We're trying to keep keep course, trying to head south as much as we can to pick up these winds tomorrow at some point. So where we are pushing the boat a lot more than we usually would. I'd like to make it a bit slower, a bit more comfortable, but. Uh, yeah, we are, we are pushing it a bit. Uh, but things are okay. Are you okay, Luke? Yeah. <laughs> bit, I don't know. bit nerve wracking when the wind picks up like this. Not really. It is, yeah. One in the morning, I'm trying to sleep behind me and I'm making noise by talking. Sorry. Uh, I think the wind is starting to calm down a little. I'm getting a bit uh, more smooth now, the wind. Uh, just trying to get into the rhythm of this uh, passage. First night. Uh, I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll get there, basically. Uh, get into a pattern first, probably get into a routine. All good, going well. Yeah, quarter past six, quarter past six in the morning, we've run out of wind. Disaster at sea. <laughs> it's totally gone. Uh, weather guys say there's wind further up. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna motor. We are not normally ones for motoring, however, in the North Atlantic, it was important for us to get south as quickly as possible. Nice and calm this morning. A bit noisy with the engine. I've got my things in my ears. Time for some toast and tea. And we've got a lot of cleaning to do because we haven't cleaned up from last night's shenanigans. Just come back to the cockpit now and realised that it's six knots being reached. So, we're going to get the full Genoa out. A bit of us. It won't be enough to sail on alone at the moment. But it's the start of these lovely, beautiful, well, I'd say the easterly, very, very east, east, southeast winds. Engine's just gone off. Yeah. Wind's arrived. Could be because it's starting to rain, but I'll take that. It probably is. It's squally. I just want to fall asleep as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Five and a half knots. Wow. Sensational. It's freezing. Yeah. Drizzly rain. Beautiful. Hopefully this will be here to stay. The dream and then a dream will come true. Yes. Nice, I love it. 
I had to get my bunk out. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uh, relaxing in here and a lot of smoke just started pouring out of the engine bay. God, what's going on? We both jumped up. Looked like someone was going to catch on fire and um, realised the, the engine was in the off position and um, it's burnt up something at the back of the engine. Stop on it. We can start the engine but it doesn't switch off. Does it? Stop it manually. So, get it going now. Can't believe it. Smoke pouring out of the engine. It's like thick, rancid plastic smoke. And then we can turn the engine on now. The key was left on the on position. Normally there's a buzzer up here which buzzes to let you know you've left it on. It wasn't buzzing. Uh, you can start it, the only way to stop it is to turn the decompression valve. That's the only way to turn the engine off is to do that. Well, at least it starts and works still. Um, we're going to have to get another solenoid ordered and delivered to... I have no idea. Bahamas maybe? I don't know whether turning the engine off manually for the decompression valve is good, not good for the engine or not. Uh, obviously we're offshore, we've got no internet. to figure all this out. Who's going to take it off and have a look at it? I don't know if you can see that, but that's what happens when adrenaline takes over and you're trying to prevent a fire on your own boat. Burn and blisters. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we need a new start stop anode. Just anode, stop, anode, anode. Stop on anode. Uh, the problem is when we turn the key off into the off position, there's no buzzer to say we've left the key on in the off position. So well, I switched it off in the off position, left the key on, and then the stop on old burnt out, caused a load of smoke. Yeah, yeah they it really. Yeah. Try and get hold of one now, order it to an address somewhere in Bermuda or Bahamas. Yeah, I mean, the main thing is the engine runs, works, and we can stop it and start it. So. Uh. Yeah, a disaster. Hopefully things will improve from here on out and uh, get a bit better. Hopefully. This is a stop solenoid in question. An engine stop solenoid is an electromagnetic device designed to cut the fuel supply to an engine to force it to stop. I found out the hard way that if you touch this while it's been left on, it is very hot. So as you've just seen, we were pretty well, we both were pretty damn devastated of what just happened. Um, unfortunately, we left the ignition key in the off position and not back into the center. So the stop solenoid to the engine was still active and it was still running the current and it heated up and it caused this bit of electrical fire. It could have been a lot worse and Luke burnt his hand. This was just devastating for us. We were really debating whether to go back, weren't we? Yeah, it was about good about 200 miles off the coast. Well, no, about 150 miles off the coast, and uh, we had a good weather window. The weather window, weather window, would be waiting for for weeks, and uh, to have this right at the beginning. Our main concern was <clears throat> if we couldn't get the engine sorted out, and we couldn't start and then stop the engine, we would have 
no engine until we got to Bermuda which so we thought if we turned around and went back to Nova Scotia it would be a safer thing to do and of course getting into Bermuda with no engine is a lot more difficult because they got a little narrow cut you got to go through the reef mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so our main concern was trying to get this engine reliable until we got to Bermuda to get extra parts on it yeah pretty it's the worst thing you probably have on a boat especially at sea is a fire the second night been one of them one of them days today where nothing seems to have gone right um, it was a tough start to this passage uh, first night we had 25 knots on close hold quite rough none of us got much sleep um, today <laughs> the wind dropped off and I think we had the engine going most of the day I got a bit snappy to be honest um, and then I was stressed and a bit snappy. I left the um, the engine in the off position, which heats up the stop solenoid and uh, overheated it. And uh, in the panic, I went in there and the smoke coming out of the engine bay, nearly fire on our yacht. And then I'll see, I burnt my hand. And, Got blisters on my hand, and uh, after something like that, I just realised the important things are we're brothers. We got to look after each other, and uh, we've got to learn not to be snappy, and we've got to really, really look after each other because we're out here on our own. And this is a dangerous passage, going from Nova Scotia to Bermuda in late October. Actually. But since then, since tea time, um, everything's been going well. Good wind at the moment, doing about four and a half to five knots, which is nice. And uh, running along nicely. Oh, tonight is a good night. Good morning, North Atlantic Ocean. My, my, don't you look choppy this morning. Past eight in the morning. Last night was it's okay. Good sailing, fast, choppy, to say the least. Fifteen to twenty-five knots. Let's put a reef in the main middle of the night. Reef the Jenny a couple of times. Um, you got the wind coming off the quarter. And the sea is a bit of an absolute mess out there. It's a cauldron. And everything cold flying. <laughs> Welcome to the cold North Atlantic Ocean in October. Yay! Now oh, let's see the toothpaste test. Oh, you have done well. I passed today. You passed. Yeah. No toothpaste for you. Uh, I've got uh, weather 50 miles ahead. 12 to 15. 12 to 15. 11 to 13. That's how we get our very very basic weather off Garmin, isn't it? For the areas, yeah, it's just could, could basic. Do, um, yeah, could do a little tutorial. Probably. Yeah, we get we get our main weather off Dag Anderson, and David Wheatley, don't we? Yeah, we get our main weather off Dag Anderson, David Wheatley, and uh, Paul. And Jeff started doing weather yes. for us now as We've well. Got about ten people sending us weather at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> got weather coming out of our ear holes. Plus, we check on the Garmin. Because on the Garmin, we give in. If you have a look, if you go on the Garmin, you can go down to the weather. And then what you do, you go to the world and you go to plus and then you select a map. There we are sailing at the moment in between Nova Scotia and um, Pum, Pum, Bermuda. Pum, Bermuda. And then you can pick a location on the map and get information and then pick, click on it and rec just request the weather. It gives you basic weather. It gives you wind speed, temperature, cloud and raining and stuff. Yeah. The wind speed is what you want and the wind direction. It's free, so we end up doing about 20 times a day. Yeah. Well, we pay £50, pounds, 50 British sterling a month for the service. Unlimited. Unlimited texts. Text. Limited emails. And weather. Mind you that, you know, you can only put like 60 characters in. Yeah. There's unlimited text, unlimited weather, unlimited 
um, emails, texts. Last night I kept hearing banging outside, banging, slapping, something banging against the rigging. Went outside with torches, looking out the window as well, I couldn't see anything. Went out there this morning and it's uh, top and lift of our boom has come off and it's wrapped itself around the radar reflector, the radar, uh, the rod side of the spreaders somehow and miraculously we looped itself around there and all around the mast. Okay. Ignore Luke in his box of shorts, but I know the ladies will quite enjoy that. <laughs> I'll come up with a plan. It's just idea, so. Is to throw our top and lift that came off up there through the gap in the spreaders to come down the other side so we can untangle it and put it back on the main without going up the mast. We're gonna try checking it. We're gonna try and get it through that triangle gap up there, just above the spreader. Hmm. Uh, that was close. Yeah, it was. Yeah. All my life. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, through, it's through the gap. Come on, we just need a bit of uh, gravity. You reckon about that? Extension of an extension. Duct tape. <laughs> a brush. <laughs> Oh dear. And it's so warm, I've got my top off. A bit premature, I think. We've untangled it twice from the spreaders, laid up loads of stuff. Basically, it's nearly there. You just gotta go back through the spreader and then down to there. Yeah, and then we're gonna take, I'll transfer my top off, take this off and put cut it off there, put a bowling in it, yep. rather than a hard chuckle. That's come off twice now, Can't during the travels. Yeah. You can't really film it much because it's so rocky, the camera will fall over, so you have to take our word for it. Right. It's done it! It's done it! <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. What we're going to do... Oh, this has failed on us twice. Cutting going to cut it off there and just tie a bowl in for now. This is our fir my first chart update. I t you know what, I completely forgot to do any chart update since we left. This has been manic, hasn't it? It's been crazy. Everything's got, loads of stuff has happened and everything. Anyway, we've done roughly 214 nautical miles, probably a little bit, oh there's more than that. First, uh, 24 hours, we've done 100 miles. And then another 110 in the second 24 hours. So yeah, probably about 220 nautical miles so far. Uh, today's conditions, we've got pretty much southeasterly winds. About 15 to 20 knots. It's sunny and it's got really warm, isn't it, look? Very warm. It's nice, really nice. So we started off in La Have in Nova Scotia. Just in here. And we're making a passage all the way down to Bermuda, which is down here, the North Atlantic Ocean, approximate 670 nautical miles south. And we're doing this in October, late October. The sea is gorgeously blue. Such a blueness to it. Go on, dip your hand in and give it a test, Luke. I don't know. Go on. Oh, I haven't done it yet, haven't I? Push you overboard, hopefully you'll disappear. It's quite warm. It's not bad, is it? Not warm, it's not, uh, not bad. It's not cold, is it? No. You can swim in there. Yeah. Be okay. Look at that. Sausage and potato with, of course, gravy. Nice to know. Hot down there. Whew. Which one? Anyway. You can have the bigger one. Both the same there. Yeah? Oh. Bon appetit. You can hear Jim Bob on in the background because there's not quite enough wind for Neppy, is there?
Guess what? What? You guessed it. Midnight. Just put a roof in the main. What did I say earlier today? I said no. What did you say? I said we're going to put, be putting a roof in the main at midnight. Yeah. And it's midnight. Bang on midnight and just put one in. Better but put... it's good because it's wind. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. There's wind. And it's warm, isn't it? It is very warm. Very warm. Back to uh, sort of like tropical weather again. Yeah. So getting used to sleeping in it. I'm just stuff. level with New York now, aren't we? Yeah. It's weird that New York's quite cold out here because we're in the Gulf Stream. Oh, in that area, it's, the water's 26 degrees. It's warm. Good morning. It is 6 a.m. in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Just woken up and it's my turn to go and watch. Look at that sky to greet you for the morning, isn't that just wonderful? Absolutely beautiful. So, how's your hand look? Can I show everyone your hand? Very sore. Here it is, the burn, electrical burn. What are you currently doing then, Luke? Researching part number for the stock coil thing you've got on the back of the engine. Yeah. We're going to try and get one pre ordered from uh, one of our uh, friends, Dad. He's going to phone around in Bermuda. The prices are going to be so expensive. Yeah. Well, if we can get one for Bermuda or one sent to Bermuda, so when we get there we can yeah, it won't be as long wait then. fit it and we'll be off again. Otherwise we'll be waiting there for ages. Unless we wait and get it delivered to the Bahamas. Oh, that is level. Yes! Oh, look at this. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. The sun is out. It's beautiful in the North Atlantic Ocean, even though I can feel some rain. Beautiful. Oh, it's lovely. Damn. It's been raining most of the night and it's been raining this morning, but now it's nice and sunny. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get better at putting this, these stay sails on. Yeah. It's so rusty. we got a treble sail set up, main, fully, storm jib, and the whole Genoa. We're doing okay. Yeah. Kind but of working. Nine knots beam reach. I think it's working. On a beam reach, it sort of covers it, but when you're yeah. reaching, it goes in between them both. Oh, look at that. Polystyrene. Polystyrene. Congratulations, humans. Oh. I think this trip so far has been a bit Stressful to be honest because it's all about being getting to the jet stream, the no, Gulf Stream, getting to the Gulf Stream, getting to the Gulf Stream. It's been like a lot of pressure to get in there, but we're less than 35 miles away from the Gulf Stream now, and we just cross that, and then we are pretty safe to Bermuda. We got like 350 miles, that's not much. So while we were in Nova Scotia, everybody we told that we we're going offshore to Bermuda, they all mentioned the Gulf Stream. You gotta go through the Gulf Stream when there's as little as wind 
not counter wind, as little as wind as possible. Otherwise, you're going to be in for a horrendous time. They also said that along the Gulf Stream, because of the warm water going up in the Gulf Stream, you get massive squalls, thunderstorms. So this was kind of had been built up. Um, our expectations of the Gulf Stream to a massive level and we were scared about going through it weren't we? We were, we were scared, really yeah. scared because of what we had heard about yeah. all the horrendous Gulf Stream. Uh, that's gonna spill if you leave that on there. See Luke lacks common sense. You'll open this and leave it on the chart table so it'll tip over. Wouldn't you Luke? No. You leave stuff on the table, slide off onto the floor, and then you realise it's why it's done this. <laughs> <laughs> so Adam puts it in the sink. It's true. It's very, very true. <laughs> okay. He just lacks basic common sense. Can we just move on now? Put this in a pan. Anyway, again. cheese on toast and beans for lunch. Let's go. <laughs> We are about 19 miles away from the Gulf Stream, uh, being uh, chatting to our uh, friend, uh, Dag Anderson, a wet weather guy. He's guiding us through the jet stream. This is uh, approximately where we are and how we're gonna do this Gulf Stream. I'll show you. I've done a little diagram here. This is the Gulf Stream running this way, up to 3.5 knots. And it runs on a, because it's got windy, so it's running down here and around there and around there. There's us there, 19 miles away. In four hours time, we hope to enter the Gulf Stream here, ride it down here, and then as it gets to, to the bottom here, we're gonna sh slingshot our way out and then be free of this Gulf Stream. That's how we're gonna try and ride it. Hopefully it will go okay. By riding it this way, if you haven't got a counter current pushing to the side, you just got a good boost and you'll be through the Gulf Stream at the same time. Oh yes. Oh blooming brilliant. Yeehaw! Big pack of dolphins. Everyone loves a good dolphin, don't they? There's loads of them. Woohoo! We're scared, didn't we? Before. Yeah. Uh, stand, the waves stand, get quite spiky. Spiky, yeah. We're te 10 miles away from the Gulf Stream. There's no wind. There's no wind. We're scared. Yeah. We're scared. We just want to get through it. Yeah. This has been our fear since we started. Right, yeah. As you can see the waves, they've gone really spiky, which means something is happening. We've got the engine on nearly full power, and we've got 11 knots of wind, and we're still only managing four knots. This is not normal at all. I just want to get through this hell hole, basically. It doesn't look like a hell hole, but it feels like it. Uh, it looks like we're in the Gulf Stream, just seeing six knots, and we're heading south into 15 knots of wind, and a her not say terrible sea, a, a choppy sea, but we're still doing six knots this way, so it means we are in a current going southbound current. I'm showing you the compass. We're definitely in the jet stream. Uh, we're Gulf going stream. Gulf Stream. We're going south with a tiny bit of west in, in it. And if Adam shows you on the charts, so according to the charts, we're doing a good southeast, really southeast speed. Six knots. Six knots now. If we stay in the fast stuff, we know we're good. We're going southeast kind of thing with it. Yeah. We'll probably come out the bottom and uh, pop out and south again. Weird, isn't it? Yeah, I don't like it at all. We've been in the Gulf Stream now for about two hours and what's quite remarkable is we've got about 13 knots of wind we're cutting into it and with the engine on and Jim Bob the electric water helm on we can stay, keep a course but as soon as you take the engine off 
the new Jim Bob, the electric ones of Helm, the boat just goes on its own. It just the boat keep course at all. So we tried putting uh, Nepi on the South Steening wind vane, and there's enough wind going over the um, the paddle, but still it won't keep course at all. Uh, I think it's the amount of current that's in the water pushing us sideways over the rudder and over over Nepi that there's no way the boat can keep course without the engine on, the engine pushing us forward through the current a little bit. It's really, really weird, even, even though we've got plenty enough wind to keep us going with Nepi on. It's quite unnerving, really. It's the night after the Gulf Stream crossing. crossing last night, which was... It wasn't too bad in the end, was it? It was bumpy. Bumpy. A bit scary, a bit bumpy, a bit dark, a bit wavy. Wind was all over the place. I uh, got through it. Uh, literally, early hours of the morning, wasn't it? Yeah, that's about yeah. ages. Nine o'clock now. Yeah, and we're through it. We've got, got some decent wind today. Next challenge now, isn't it? Got some strong winds coming up. Tonight, is it? This evening, overnight, 25 to 30 knots from the east. Today is Monday, 26th of October, 10.30 a.m. in the morning. In the last 24 hours, we've done 99 miles. Average speed of 4.2 knots. That's exactly where we are there. We have roughly 326 nautical miles south to run to Bermuda, which is out here in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, North Atlantic. Today, we're expecting easterlies and east-southeast, possibly 10 to 25 knots, and squalls up to 30, and tonight, in early hours tomorrow morning, expecting east or east southeast, 25 to 35 knots, so gale conditions possible. Today it's about 26 degrees and about 35,000 degrees inside the cabin. <laughs> it's just sweating, it's so hot. So, this is what we had sort of been expecting. We had some uh, news off our, one of our weather guys to say we may be expecting a gale. Uh, this is one of the reasons why we fitted our stay sail and got a storm a storm jib, hank on jib to go on there. So it was time to start preparing the boats. I think I went up on the bow and I hanked on a little storm jib and we were just getting our little, getting everything going when we yeah. and uh, preparing for some bad weather to come. We were we were expecting it, weren't we? Because this yeah. is what we built up and. Um, <clears throat> It was scary and exciting at the same time. Yeah. And nothing, not something we wanted to go through, really. No, it was only a matter of time before yeah. on the way down we'll get hit by something. We were expecting a gale, or a lot of people were telling us to expect bad weather and to be hit by a low pressure at some point. And so, this is what all the preparations were for. Within anticipation of 30 to 35 knot gusts tonight. Uh, Adam's going to put the storm sail up, but if he puts the storm sail up at Ness, he's going to get really, really wet. So we're going to get the Genoa in, and I'm going to uh, sort of balance her in a heave to position. So we're just bobbing on the waves while Adam does his, his uh, magic up the front there. Hopefully not getting wet. I'm just going to turn the tiller and trying to get it up into the wind, not quite, not quite, not quite tacking, just up into the wind so she holds steady. This is called heave toing. The filming might not be very good because I need to concentrate because Adam's up on the port front there. Just want to keep it about there. We're doing 1.5 knots crawling forward. The boat has gone nice and steady. And it's gone reasonably dry, so Adam can do his business up forward.
they've gone all nice and peaceful, isn't it? Lovely and calm. It's lovely. Just doing one knot forward. So we get it all done. Adam has lashed the uh, storm sail onto the deck there, ready to be used, or hopefully not used later. We've got the jib or the Genoa back out. And uh, it was really relaxing, wasn't it? Yeah. It really relaxing. Just under main. Everything went still and quiet. How peaceful. Many, well, like two, one knot forward, weren't you? One to one and a half. Yeah. It's lovely. Good. So this boat will heave to on a reef, fully reef down main, just perfectly. Should do, yeah. yeah. It's so quiet. You can see how white people do it and then just go down and make a cup of tea because it's so quiet. Yeah, it takes all the sting out, the stress. And the noise and the whistling, the howling, the waves, it's all That's gone. Nice. Luke's put a reef in the mainsail, so we got two reefs in there. We've got one more reef left to make that into a tri sail if needed. Uh, I've set up the storm jib on the inner stay, the stay sail storm jib, ready for tonight to deploy. So we may have to fill the jenny completely and run on a storm sail and a triple reef main. I think the plan is to keep this boat moving slowly tonight to windward or a beam reach if possible in 35 knots. If it's too much, we'll back away from it, fall off the wind, heave to. Reason being, we need to get to Bermuda and it's due south of us. And we got a lot of easterlies and southeasterlies. We don't want to be pushed off to the west, otherwise we'll never get there. And then now they're predicting end of next week, 43 knots from the north. So again, we're under time pressure stress to get there so this journey is really living up to expectation of being an absolute slog to get from Canada to Bermuda safely so these a load of freeze-dried food isn't it look yeah we had a whole bin bag full Gary off Gary thanks Gary from La Haye River Yacht Club a whole bin bag full of freeze-dried food I mean a massive any black food, bag any food you think of so we're gonna try this mushrooms mushrooms yeah we'll like see mushrooms. what's in there mushrooms. oh oh it all blowing away <laughs> oh, it's snowing it? snowing mushrooms in you Onion. Freeze onion. Amazing, isn't it? Why? It smells beautiful. Cooked onion. It smells nice. Yeah, it does. Well done, sir. There it is. <laughs> Foot. <laughs> Sausages with omelettes. I like omelette. It is omelette, really. And then freeze-dried onions and mushrooms, and it's absolutely delicious. Thanks, Gary. Hello. It's a bit Jenny out now, isn't it? What up, Dave? How are we doing? Yeah, okay, not too bad. The wind dropped off to about 15 knots, so we put out a little bit of Genoa and turned 16 degrees to port. So we're a bit more south southeast now. So we're veering off to the southwest because we haven't got that much sail up. And then mm. he was losing the will to live. <laughs> no. Her paddle's right back and she needs a bit of wind in through the paddle and some good amount of sail up. We're hoping for not much wind though, aren't we? Yeah. And the speed isn't great. Better than nothing. But this is fine. This has been nice for the night to be honest. Hello everybody, it's 20 past 1 in the morning and it is pretty windy. We've done all the preparations today, preparations today, I'm glad we've done it. And neither of us can, uh, well, can get any sleep basically when we're off watch. So, um, it's blowing a constant, continuously 22 knots, uh, 26 knot gusts at the moment. Uh, it doesn't seem that much but this is the open ocean and the waves build up massively. Uh, good news is we are still managed to um, stay on course to Bermuda, I'm making between three and four knots. Um, 
we can't go any faster because the front starts to slam. Uh, just, it's a horrendous noise and we don't want to damage the boat. Uh, everything's okay, we're just uh, plodding along through this and uh, trying our best, you know, trying to get through this uh, heavy weather which is probably going to last most of the day tomorrow as well. Uh, yeah. Okay, check in in a bit then. At this point, it, the weather really started to deteriorate and we were just wondering how bad it was going to get. But at this time, it was uncomfortable on board, but we felt okay about it. Uh, good morning from this violent North Atlantic Ocean. Uh, it's 20 past 9 in the morning. Been blowing an absolute hooli all night long. We've had waves crashing over the boats, big waves smashing into the boat and picking her up and chucking her on her side. Yeah, it's been quite the night. Apparently we've got all day of this until this evening when it eventually abates. It's uh, a low pressure system passing by. I've just been eating a Nutri-Green bar. Cheer my spirits. <laughs> so what it looks like today Storm sail still on deck. Uh, what I'm going to do in a bit now is put the third reef in the main sail and then let out a little bit of more jib, a bit of Genoa. Uh, we're doing four and a half to five knots. It's been reeked, so it's not too bad. Could never, could never cut into this ever. But everything's where it should be. You're running downwind from this it wouldn't be so bad but we need to get to Bermuda before a northeasterly gale comes through Saturday yeah so today is Tuesday and all our weather people have been saying that Saturday midday there's a gale a really bad gale coming in. Knots. 42 knots from the south, from the northeast. And we have to get to Bermuda before the gale comes in. If we don't make it, then we'll be going southwest with the, the gale behind us trying to get to Bahamas. Now, <laughs> just had a near disaster. Uh, we nearly could have lost half of Nepi into the ocean. Uh, Luke will explain now in a bit. Oh dear. He just noticed it. I never noticed it. He did. Can't believe it. Somehow in the night we lost the nut. That nut there came off. And this whole mechanism was ah, this hanging, out. hanging out. We would have lost all of this mechanism. No steerage. Luke just noticed it. So we're gonna look over Nepi now. Can't believe that. That's shocking. Let's get a pair of I'll get you a spanner. Luke was on his one of his routine inspections and he noticed one of the pins out of our South Steel wind vane which holds the counterweight and the airfoil had the, the nut had come off at the end and it was backing its way out. Half out. <laughs> half out. So if we would have lost that pin, we could have lost half our self-steering uh, wind, wind vane gear and we would have had to hand steer. 
I've been mean, absolutely devastated. Yeah. We need that. We rely on that 100%. Yeah, we got a an older ham, pushrod older ham, but it's just it would be no good in anything above 15 knots because it normally goes completely and crazy, going in and out, in and out, in and out. Plus, we only got a very small battery bank on this uh, boat, and it wouldn't have enough power to sustain it. So, to lose our self wind. Um, steering, steering system would be an absolute disaster because we sail with that as much as possible like 95% of the time uh, Neppy our wind vane is doing all yeah. the job to work to lose that good morning everyone it's 10 a.m. Tuesday 25th of October 10 o'clock in the morning uh, in the past 24 hours we've done 102.5 nautical miles Average speed of 4.25 knots. It's not too bad considering we've been beaten to weather. Today the weather is at the moment east and it's going southeast later on today. Anything from 10 to 25 knots gusts. Quite nasty seas. Sorry if the camera's wobbling all over the place, but it is what it is today. We've got roughly 231 nautical miles to get to Bermuda. This is life as an offshore sailor sometimes. Laying in your bunk for over 24 hours, doing very little. Hope the weather calms down soon. Civilized meal we've had in days. It was the calm after the storm we got last 24 hours. Yeah. The gale. It's really gone quiet and nice. Relax. Eat. There goes the sun going down on what's been a really tough 24 hours. It's probably been up there in the top three of the worst 24 hours you've had at sea. Really tough going. Us and the boat have been beaten up badly. And nothing's broken, thank God, touch wood. The wind's starting to abate now, starting to come calm back down and it's going from east to southeast to south and south southwest tonight. So we can start pushing a little bit over to the east towards Bermuda a touch about midnight tonight. Hello everybody. Oh my god, that's great. Quick update. <laughs> we are peeved two at the moment as we got 36 knots. And it's absolutely tipping down with rain. You can hear the wind screaming. So we've got some sort of storm going on outside. It's not raining, but the forecast is for 27 knots max. And we're getting 40 knots. I've had it for 45 minutes now, blowing 40 knots. The waves are huge, we're heaved to. It's just come out absolutely nowhere. It's not forecast, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, we're both scared. 
Middle of the night as well. Look, the sea is going white with foam. Jesus, wet. Pity it's not in the day. Horrendous. do really whether to try and run down with it a bit or just carry on as we are. Pretty kind of see It's about eleven o'clock at night, wasn't it? Yeah we finally hit that that really really bad weather. Uh, we thought it was a squall at the start because it started raining and the wind picked up and picked up and increased and then the, the rain stopped but the wind didn't abate and we were quickly on our Garmin, um, offshore Garmin tracker, texting our weather guy saying, you know, do you have any idea what's going on? And he messaged us to say there was a low pressure. Uh, we were in a low anyway, a very light low, weren't we? Mm. And we were at the tail end of this low pressure, and it, it, the wind and the, the sea had increased on the tail of this low, and it was causing these severe winds. And we had a, it, one night, one part of the night, we had a force nine. Forty one point seven knots on the instrument. Yeah, the instruments. Yeah, we dropped all the sail. All we had up was, uh, I think it was a double or a triple reef main, and we set our wind vane to steer 90 degrees or 60 degrees into that wind. So during this storm we had at night, I was I was scared and Luke was scared. I was very scared. Because it's always worse when it happens at night and we didn't quite know at that particular time what was going on. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't forecast. No, it wasn't forecast, was it? What, what we thought was gonna be a half an hour score with rain turned out to be four or five hours and we were too scared we locked ourselves in the boat and we were too scared to go up I mean Atlas were looking after the, us well she was heaved to with the wind vane and a double a treble reef main she was safe but it was the noise and not knowing what was going on it was scary wasn't it so the waves you could you can't see the waves because obviously it's dark but you could hear them and we were just standing, I was sat here, Luke was standing up there, and you could just hear these massive breaking waves come, and the boat would go whoop, and lift it up in the air, and smash back down, and the floor would rumble as the waves right, come right. underneath the boat, like that. I was just waiting for the boat to be knocked completely flat on its side, but Atlas did her thing, the wind vane did her thing, and it kept us heave to into those conditions. Finally, by the morning, it abated. Yeah. And then we we were like, we need to keep this. We need to get this boat moving to Bermuda, don't we? Yeah. Oh, it was terrifying. It's the morning after the forty knots we had last night, Eve two, for like three hours, two hours. Tired. Well, this film's all about moaning, isn't it? So the morning after, we were heading the wrong direction. We were heading east. I mean, we needed to be going south. Uh, at this point, we were both extremely tired, and just. Exhausted. Exhausted from the whole um, journey. A lot of it was close hauled, and we were not heading in a regnon direction. We were about 200 miles away from uh, Bermuda, and we were thinking, what are we going to do if a low pressure comes in now and we're heading east, away from Bermuda and away from safety? That's how it happened. Though. Moaning and groaning and grumbling. Yeah, we're attacking again to the east now because we've got southerly winds. And there was more moaning. Normally, uh, videos are quite a beat, but mm. this is how it's happened. You put it through, a, put through the ringer. Shit time, basically. Luckily, there's no damage, touch wood. The only thing is, my hatch, forward hatch is leaking. You know, all those bad weather, water's coming in through here. So I've got towels. Towels all over here, they're soaked. 
This is our sail area, just destroyed. It's hard moving around. We're gonna try to attack the other way, see how that goes. I think tomorrow the weather forecast is going light, didn't it, for a couple of days. Really light winds, so we're probably gonna do some motoring south directly to Bermuda. That's what we're close hold at the minute and we're just absolutely rubbish. It's going sideways. Could be better than that, not the other time. Yeah. We'll see in a bit. Definitely lost weight on this trip. We have lost about half a stone so far. Let's see what I look like. We said we should have taken some photos before and after. Before we left. When we got there. Let's see what's happened. Good morning everyone, it's uh, Wednesday, uh, 26th of October, 2022. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, it's day seven at sea from passage from Nova Scotia, up here, down to Bermuda. And as you can see by that charts, we're going the wrong way. Uh, still fighting to get to Bermuda, I've had headwinds feels like every day we've had headwinds we haven't had headwinds every day but it feels like it um in the last 24 hours we've done 85 nautical miles average speed of 3.6 knots which is terrible the at the moment the wind's coming up from the south that way so we can't go directly to our destination from tacking um it's about between 15 and 20 knots the seas are still pretty messy can only do what we can do lunch on the sofa seti. <laughs> yes, we're opening this. I did manage to cut myself as usual. Well done, Liv. Thank you. Yeah, good living life at 30 degrees now. Everything's going to be done on its side. That could be, yeah. Sailing quite well in this conditions as well. We got double reef main, three quarters of Genoa, and she's quite balanced. I think with this boat, we always need a bigger jib than mainsail. If the main's bigger than the jib, it doesn't work. It's unbalanced. No. The powerhouse of this boat is the jib. Front. She likes a good front sail. Yeah. She likes good power. Otherwise, she just won't go fast. Nope. She just stall and go slow. She needs a lot of power up front. Yeah. That's the engine of the boat. So I don't know. Uh... So even though we've got 20 knots, we've got a double reef main and three quarters of a Genoa. It's quite balanced and it's fast. Big waves up now. Yeah. Now and again, there's some big waves. Road waves. In your bunk at night and it's blowing 25, 30 knots, you can hear the waves coming <laughs> across the ocean. Well, they're there, especially when it's <laughs> warm. When they boom, hit you. Yeah. And believe it or not, I was standing because I couldn't sit down last night when the 40 knots are blowing. You're standing on the floor and the floor is vibrating as the wave passes underneath the boat. Goes, and you can feel the floor vibrating through your feet as the wave and all the water goes underneath the hull. It's quite remarkable, yeah. scary. Sounds like a freight train. And that's only 40 knots. Yeah. What's that? Force eight? I don't know, seven. That's gale, sure. Gales at eight, isn't it? 34, 35 knots, 36 knots is a gale. So we had 40. Yeah. I thought that was a near gale, 35 knots. Is it? 
think so. He'll let us know in the comments, won't he? Oh yeah. I think we're on the homeward run now, aren't we? Beating east. Hopefully. At this point, we had 170 nautical miles left to Bermuda, and we had a message of our weather guys to say, get into Bermuda as soon as you possibly can, due to bad weather. So now it's time to start motoring. We had about 160 nautical miles to Bermuda, and we had to motor all the way there because the wind was slightly on the nose and it was very light. And uh, we had to get all big red, two, two cylinder big red going, and that was, it was on all day, all night, all day, and I think towards the end of the next night as well, yeah. before we finally got to Bermuda. Absolutely yeah. nightmare. Bearing in mind our engine heats up the boat like mad. We hate running it because of the noise, and we have to wear ear defenders. And it's just basically like a form of torture for 30 Quite a hours. While. Yeah. And he's been on since last night, about, no, yesterday afternoon, wasn't it? Um, it's okay. It's 117 miles to go to... Where are we going? Bermuda. Bermuda. But this race, hopefully, fingers crossed, touch wood and everything. We'll be there Friday afternoon. In quarter past 10 in the morning, the date is... Thursday, October 27th, 2022. We've been at, this is our eighth day at sea, sailing from Nova Scotia to Bermuda. The last 24 hours, we've covered 95 miles, 3.95 knots. We have approximately 111 miles to go to Bermuda. The wind today is on the nose again, around 10 to 13 knots. But tonight is going easterly, so on the nose now, finger up near. Go easterly tonight, so we can pick up some winds to get to Bermuda. Uh, 130, 111 nautical miles to go. Uh, it's 25 degrees in the day and 24 at night. Assume the position. <laughs> We've laying there for seven days, haven't you? You found something though. Look at the difference in this. You listen. The engine. Give you a couple of seconds. Now listen. It's so much noisier. <laughs> so we're going to keep that on there. That's quiet. It's amazing. That's just foam. There. No, I'm gonna go around the mast. I thought you were gonna put it on. Sure, I'll have a look. It working? Don't know. So, because of the, the main sheets, shelf sheeted right in the middle, yeah. I want that kind of the same angle so it's picking up a little bit of the wind. I think it's working a little bit. 4.3. Yeah. Extra half a knot from that. Let me change the angle then, I'll shoot it to the other side of the mast. Yeah, well the wind is going to come on south east of isn't it? Yeah. It goes on, so. Yeah. Definitely helping, I think, look. 4.2 knots. Over half a knot from it. Jobs are good then. Clever, isn't I? Big squall, isn't it? Yeah. Heavy rain, squall just passing by. <laughs> wow. The hatch opened, did they, eh? Yeah, we <laughs> let the skylight open. <laughs> and, uh, well, I looked, I was looking at Luke and I looked over and the water just pouring down, pouring down to my seat. All my cushions are absolutely soaked. The laptop support thing. It went all over the floor, all over there, all down here. The last night of shenanigans. Luke's been on the helm. So, I'm soaking, I'm drying it now. Mm. It's the final morning, but I'm some 
toasting tea. In my head. Yeah. Uh, How many miles left to go? 14 miles left. You're looking at all the bows, you can see it. Yep, can't see anything yet. You've actually had the engine on for like 36 hours. Because the only reason we've had the engine on for so long is because we got a low fresh system to the north storm and a low pressure system to the southwest. And there was a danger of them coming in. So one of our weather guys advised us to get to Bermuda as fast as possible, but as fast as possible when we, were, when we were 160 miles away and the wind was on the nose, so we decided the motor. We switched off the engine this morning at 30 miles to go. So that's hell of a lot more doing. But we're here now and we're gonna be safe. Hopefully checking this afternoon. Ooh, exciting. You're looking at the distance over there. Right, right, right. Yes. You can see Bermuda. Where? Over there. To starboard. Bermuda. Oh yeah. Wow. We made it. We nearly made it. It's a long time, isn't it? <laughs> I feel a little bit emotional because the <sighs> the passage was really tough and it's just nice to be here it's really hard it was tough and uh, scary especially in the Force 9 it was scary and terrifying and we didn't know didn't know what to do. I mean, after the Force 9, we had, we were on one tack with a double reef main, and we were both scared to go outside for at least three to four hours after the Force 9 uh, gale happened. We were just terrified to go outside. But we finally got up the courage and we tacked, and we tacked to the uh, east, and we had to try and get a bit of confidence back. For saying that, the boat looked after this well. Anyway, I'm going off track. Uh, we're here at the Bermuda. Uh, it's wonderful. It looks a lot more green than I ever imagined it would. I'm just gonna go to the town cut. There's no dinghy sailing. There's dinghy sailing, which I didn't expect. Yeah. And there's a town cut there. I don't know if you can see it right in front of us. Oh, that's wonderful. Really thin. It must be man-made. Yeah. One hell of a trip, isn't it? Can you go in there? Yeah. This is crazy. <laughs> crazy. Just going through a town cut into Bermuda. It's uh, amazing. It's very humid. Well, haven't we done it? We're not up on the deck this time. No. We're downstairs, we'll make some food. We're really tired. We're eating cheese. Hungry. A bit melted the cheese, as you can see. Somebody bought it for us. We'd never pay $25. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, be delighted, don't you? Customs, customs are stuff. Super friendly. Nice. Just gonna relax now tonight and have a couple of beers and watch a film and go to bed, sleep through the night. Nice. Be nice. Congratulations, Luke. Yeah, nice. Horrible passage done. You've done it though. <laughs> it was it was tough, wasn't it? Yeah. Really, really tough. Stressful. Hard work. Tiresome. Bad weather. Strong winds. Big waves. It's our first beer in since we left. Yeah. It's nice, isn't it? Well, people will have a go at me, but this is how I bought my beer. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> this is Honey Brown. It's produced with Beautiful. honey, with honey produced from a farm. Brown ale. Nova's Goji Honey is fantastic, yeah. isn't it? Congratulations, Luke. Congratulations, Adam. You made it. It's tough passage, wasn't it? Tough, real tough. Be a taste of success. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>